Hello and welcome everyone uh, to the testing mobile web apps on real devices, a page out of how Fortune 100 companies do it by Samiran Saha and Dhwani uh, Parikh. We are glad Samiran and Dhwani can join us today. Sure, thank you Ankit. So a very warm welcome to all of you uh, presenting our talk today, testing mobile web apps on real devices, a page out of how Fortune 100 companies do it. Let's get started. My name is Samiran Saha, and uh, I have uh, roughly about 11 years of experience in tech consulting space, as well as in my current company, which is a product company. In my uh, experience, I do a lot of uh, conversations with customers uh, around their testing strategy, and more specifically, their automation journey. Happy to discuss a few items with you during this talk. Dhwani? Thank you, Samiran. Hello, everyone. I am Dwani Parekh. I have a total of nine years of experience working with tech consulting companies, telecom, fintech, and currently, currently I'm a customer engineering team lead at BrowserStack. So this is how the structure of our talk is going to look like. We are going to get started with the web APIs and how it's expanding the mobile web testing landscape, along with the business significance of mobile web testing. Uh, then we will get into a little bit of debate about real devices and uh, uh, emulator simulators and our take uh, on it. Uh, I am also very excited to talk about, uh, you know, the real world mobile web testing use case demos that we have uh, planned. Uh, so I'm hoping you are also looking forward for it. Uh, finally, we are going to get into, uh, you know, how teams and organizations can meet their dynamic infrastructure requirements for the real world, real mobile device testing. All right. So as we begin, I'd like to talk to you about a few uh, real world use cases that come to us uh, on a regular uh, you know, basis. Um, so yeah, let me get started. I need to book an Uber intercity to get to the meeting location. Can we do a Google Meet instead to finalize the terms? Second one, um, I am I have been looking forward for uh, you know the Apple uh, service center. Uh, but I'm really hungry at this point in time. So I'd like to order a quick snack from Zomato first. Third one, uh, let's say, you know, I've learned uh, trading very recently and I would like to open a, a trading account on Zerodo.com. When, when you all were hearing about these use cases, what was the first thought that were coming to your mind in terms of getting started? Let me guess, I'll download the native app from the app stores to get started, isn't it? I'd not be surprised if a number of you were thinking in that direction, but is there a simpler, faster, and a much more convenient way to access uh, the business's products? Yes, absolutely. You can always use the mobile businesses or the business's mobile website and get started and expect the same functionality to be accessible on a mobile web platform as well. With the advent and the growth in web APIs, Businesses today have started configuring uh, their applications to, you know, provide the functionalities that depend closely on the device's hardware, right? And basically make them available on the business's mobile website itself, right? These use cases, as you might see on the slide, are incredibly hard to test and further automate due to the very reason of the poor device features involved, such as the speaker the microphone, the camera, and various other device sensors that are required for this kind of testing. Further, it's very difficult to set up a real world application environment as well for fintech applications or payment processing applications, which further you know, cause a lot of uh, challenges for testing. Before we get into more specifics about web APIs, right? I would like you to, you know, uh, uh, get a, a little more acquainted about the business uh, focus of, for mobile web testing and why businesses today care about making their mobile web experience awesome and seamless. Over to you, Dhwani. Thank you so much, Samiran. Uh, so before we talk about why testing websites on mobile devices is significant or has become so important, let's start asking basic questions. How are consumers accessing the internet in 2022? What are the stats and trends that have allowed businesses to put focus on this? So at a very base level, if you look at a search done, 
mobile searches have taken up to 60% of the entire search volume. So it's fair to assume that the very first encounter of cons uh, consumers with any brand would happen on a mobile device. Hence, if your mobile experience isn't optimized for various different devices, manufacturers, network conditions, these end users may not appear on your analytics merely because your website wasn't mobile friendly. It's very likely they might not return. So let's take a page out of what businesses have learned, unlearned, and how have they evolved in the space. So on your extreme right-hand side, we'll start off with talking about one of the largest and a successful start startup for refurbished phones. They prioritized adding new features over testing their website performance on different platforms. However, when they noticed that the business results on their mobile website was lagging behind the desktop version, a shift happened. They focused on opti optimizing their mobile website performance and saw an uptick in the mobile revenue by an increase of 42%, which was huge at that time. One of India's largest e-commerce conglomerate adopted an app-only strategy and temporarily shut down its mobile website altogether, as the company found it more and more difficult to provide a user experience that was as fast and engaging as that of their mobile app. A few years later, they decided to unify their web and mobile presence in the market into a mobile-optimized progressive web app, leading leading to a th three times more time in user activity, 70% of increase in the conversion rate. And the most important factor and parameter for them to make this shift was the re-engagement rate, which, which saw an uptick and increase of 40%. So when you talk about re-engagement, that is something that works for businesses, that how many users, how many consumers just not leaving uh, the, the products on a cart are coming back to buy it. So if you look at the pie chart on your left-hand side that shows the share of web traffic on mobile platforms, you'll see year on year that there has been an increasing, uh, increasing in the conversion rate. So it's safe to say that three out of every $4 spent online comes from mobile devices as of now. So moving on to the next section of what we want to discuss today is not just talking about uh, uh, the virtual space in terms of emulators or simulators. We'll just talk about the entire virtual space. Historically, the testing infrastructure has been shifting right to using real devices. But the debate on what's better, virtual or real, has been going on for a very long time. But then are we asking the right questions? Do we know what works best for our testing environment? What does our application need or rather deserve? So today we'll talk about a couple of parameters presented on today's slide, starting off with the hardware and software provisions on virtual devices. Post 2015, a lot of improvements have happened on Android emulators in terms of providing advanced system images. But then by design, emulators are resource intensive programs. They just mimic the target mobile device processor by using the host machine's resources. So it's safe to say that the performance can only get as fast as the underlying hosting machine hardware. But then when you talk about simulators, Apple has always maintained its stance, never to assume that a simulator reflects the real world performance or the precise capabilities of a graphics processor used in a real iOS device. So you will have to procure iOS devices at the end of the day. But then talking about the OS framework, software provisions, emulators have evolved with support, but then when you look at the entire virtual space, iOS still recommends using real devices for testing over simulators. There's so many sensory aspects that have come into picture in today's market for your real world use cases and testing around it. None of the hardware sensors like Bluetooth, NFS, SIM supports, uh, card injection, USB are supported on simulators as of today. Emulators do have limited support for temperature, proximity, light, pressure on the latest configurations of AVD. But the most important factor for today's discussion is the display and UI interaction. It is given that the resolution or the pixel per inch 
uh, on a device versus a virtual device will differ. For example, the results in your text and images might appear jagged, especially with smaller text or when you are making sure that your website or your application is accessible. However, a flaky UI is non-negotiable for any brand. There are chances of feature disparity between mediums in discussion. This is an overhead in terms of your test case maintenance when you talk about advanced testing of, about automation, which will affect your release cycles and wanting to have a faster go to market, essentially. So we'll talk about one of the use cases. One of our leading global, uh, global consulting companies was testing their website exclusively using emulators due to cost concerns. All of their functional automation test cases pass successfully with satisfac satisfactory screenshots on emulators. But then there was, a, there was a scenario when an employee decided to test uh, with their personal device due to lack of emulators. They noticed an accept cookie pop up. It was broken. No matter how many times the person clicked on that accept button, nothing would happen. So the entire team got together and started testing the same functionality of the website on different real devices. They got iOS, Android in place, and they started, they started noticing that this accept cookie uh, pop-up was broken on real devices and did not come up while testing on emulators. So essentially, the entire functional automation valid validation gave a false positive. Then they decided to move to a more consolidated structure that gave them a, a scalable solution on cloud for real and virtual devices. Fragmentation is something, fragmentation is a, has been a problem on all platforms and it has been going on forever. The question here is not about investing on a re reliable infrastructure for your virtual devices versus procuring a set of real devices. This is a scalability and sustainability issue that will be discussed and covered later in the discussion. So moving on to the next slide, there are pros and cons to both the sides, and this has been there forever. But the decision should be made by, by teams only ha after having prepared a checklist based on what your web application or any application needs. So here is a generic representation of a checklist based on what one wants to go ahead with. So what kind of testing do you want to do? What kind of, what is the phase where you want to decide what are you going to select for your infrastructure? If, if you're talking about uh, scenarios that have become so important in today's world in terms of app profiling, interruption testing, camera image injection, sensory, there's so many scenarios and the apps are, have evolved so much that this checklist will help teams and essentially businesses decide how do they want to uh, create the entire testing infrastructure. So we'll move on to the most fun part of today's discussion, which where Samiran will talk about real world uh, use cases. Uh, the demos have been automated and Samiran will take over. Over to you, Samiran. Thank you so much, Dwani. Okay, so coming to the uh, interesting uh, part around demos, uh, right? Um, we have three demos out here uh, to be discussed uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, uh, the first one is about audio video conferencing automation on the web browser, right? Both uh, on mobile as well as uh, desktop web browsers. We are gonna have a three-way conference uh, demonstrated. Uh, the second one is basically how do you get uh, you know your sim card uh, testing use cases like sms uh, right let's say for logging uh, logging into an application right the third use case uh, that we have out here is how uh, geolocation or gps location can be tested to get uh, or find the nearest store which is closest to you so that's the overview of the you know uh, use cases that we have for demo today and i'm going to straight away jump into the demo of the first one which is audio video conferencing before deep diving into the code so at this point in time uh, this is a three way conference uh, between two desktop browsers and a mobile browser uh, the audio video files that are supposed to be injected into the um, session are getting downloaded post which the session starts Hi, how are you? What are your plans for the weekend? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to the Selenium conference this weekend. How about you? 
I'm pretty sure all of us uh, have been looking forward to this uh, today. And uh, when, uh, you know, now that we have actually demonstrated the functionality end to end uh, out here, I'd, you know, go to the code and show you how we have been able to configure it. So this is basically the Selenium, Selenium conference uh, repo, which is publicly available uh, on uh, GitHub as well. Uh, and uh, it's been developed in Nightwatch. Uh, these are some of the use cases that we spoke about uh, locating a store, the OTP use cases and audio video conference. Uh, and this is how we are basically going ahead and running them uh, using different configurations around uh, desktop, cloud desktop browsers or for cloud mobile browsers, right? Uh, so based on the particular use case, uh, specifically talking about the audio video conference uh, automation, uh, it basically happens through the configuration file, wherein when I have defined these browsers, right, uh, uh, Chromium browsers specifically provide you a functionality to, uh, you know, inject an audio stream uh, or a video stream. And I have basically done this audio video injection using files, custom files that I have pre-recorded, right? Uh, but then once we inject them into the sessions, uh, as you can see, this is a desktop session. This is a second uh, session, which also has the audio video injection. And then I'm also doing it on the real world uh, device or a real device, Samsung Galaxy S21 uh, for the audio video injection, right? And with this, we are able to, you know, um, get, the conferencing uh, requirements uh, there on that particular device uh, for automation requirements. And once we have this, right, we can always go ahead and check the frame rate, the, the bits per uh, second, right? Uh, and all the specific fun UI functionalities that the audio video conferencing application uses, right? This basically gets you started with a lot of additional use cases that you may have for your uh, you know, testing requirements. And basically when we want to look at the specific code for the uh, application, here is where we have gone ahead and injected these uh, videos uh, and audio files, um, um, you know, basically by downloading it to the machine and then ensuring that the configuration takes care about the injection. Uh, we have used a sample application that allows, use to, allows us to go ahead and um, you know, start a conference. And that's how we have been able to start a three-way conference using, um, you know, the Chrome Edge and the mobile device browser. So that is uh, specific to our first use case. And now that I'm at the code, I'll also show the code for the remaining two use cases. I think a very broader use of this entire, uh, you know, multi-platform application automation that we just saw in the, uh, you know, video conferencing use case is basically how do you get the mobile OTP, right? When you are logging in to, to your application through a desktop and would like uh, to get the OTP fetched from a mobile device and then re-entered into the desktop, right? These are complex use cases that a number of customers basically talk to us about. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty simple, straightforward uh, way, uh, you know, to do it in any framework. In this particular case, we have gone ahead and used, used Nightwatch. Uh, again, what we are doing is uh, we are starting two sessions. Uh, one is the desktop session and one is the mobile session and ensuring that once the desktop session enters the mobile number, uh, then we are basically able to, you know, retrieve the OTP, uh, which came on the phone, uh, which has a SIM card and then re-enter it in the uh, desktop session. Right. So uh, a simplistic use case, a more simplistic use case of the OTP is when this entire, you know, workflow happens on the same device. Right. So, for example, in this particular use case, we have opened the Flipkart login page and, uh, you know, clicked on uh, the login button, thereby entering the mobile phone number and basically, you know, then waited for the uh, OTP to come to the same phone to eventually enter it and successfully log into the web application. In both cases, uh, be it desktop mobile interaction or be it a truly mobile interaction, this is all you know possible now with uh, you know real devices. And of course, uh, uh, we have used the cloud platform to access the real devices out here. Talking about the last use case, which is about uh, you know locating the nearest store to uh, uh, and an automation around that. So. When you are basically locating a nearest store, you are basically using the mobile devices GPS functionality, right? And you would want to, uh, you know, get the nearest store uh, or, you know, as per your requirement, uh, uh, you know, get the nearest uh, uh, specific thing that you are looking for as per your application requirements and uh, 
uh, business use case. In this particular use case, we have gone to Apple uh, uh, service page, right? Uh, and would like to locate the Apple service center. In this case over here, you are able to see that we are injecting a particular GPS, right? Uh, which is uh, me currently here sitting in Mumbai, uh, injecting a GPS of a Chennai location and would like to get to see the, the uh, service centers that are nearest to this GPS location. Uh, and that's that's uh, you know how this basic code looks like. And uh, at this point, now that we have seen uh, some of the code specifics, let me go ahead and showcase uh, what it looks like end to end. So this is a simple uh, mobile um, OTP automation use case. Uh, open flipkart.com, enter the phone number. Uh, we have masked the phone number for security requirements, uh, but um, yeah, uh, when you enter the phone number, you would basically get the OTP, which eventually gets added in the application and you then are able to successfully log in. This is again handling a native pop-up that comes in, right? Uh, you must have seen this pop-up uh, in your day-to-day -day workflows as well. All right, uh, moving forward, the desktop and mobile interaction. This is how the actual you know, uh, sequence of events happen. And we have basically both the mobile and the desktop interacting with each other. We got the OTP 876631, which gets entered back into the desktop application to log in successfully. Right. Coming to the final uh, use case demo, uh, we have out here the nearest store service center. Right. Uh, sitting in, you know, at this location, what you could see out there is that the original GPS location of the device was different. And then we injected the particular uh, GPS location to eventually get the stores that are, uh, you know, in that particular uh, location. So. Um, again, when you are using cloud devices as well, uh, it's not that you are restricted towards testing only on that GPS location. You can definitely go ahead and inject a, a new GPS location and make the real device believe that you know we the user is at a particular GPS location to basically you know get the application functionality work work with it. All right, so. Uh, before you know getting into the dynamic infrastructure needs, I just wanted to also call out that this entire repository is available on uh, the Selenium Conference 2022 repo on the Browse Tag GitHub organization. And uh, you know, a sample test case is what we have run uh, is also you know uh, something that you can basically go ahead and test using a free trial of Browse Tag. Um, we'd like to thank BrowseTech to give us uh, this opportunity to use their infrastructure. All right. All right. So at this point in time, I'd, I'd also like to talk about, you know, meeting the dynamic infrastructure needs. Now that you have seen how uh, real devices can be used for your testing requirements, um, the next question would in your mind would be, how do I, you know, scale with real devices, right? Uh, a number of customers that I've spoken to um, basically have tried to, you know, set up a real device uh, mobile lab internally within their organization and eventually face a lot of challenges. Let me speak to you about some of those challenges, right? Um, how about the entire logistical, uh, you know, delays that happen in terms of procurement of real devices, right? You need to clean up these real devices to ensure that your tests are not getting flaky results after a period of time, right? You would also, you know, need to ensure that uh, once your devices are getting old and slow, right, the battery is getting bloated up, right? How do you go ahead and ensure that you are having still a seamless testing experience? And due to all these factors, your testing experience does not get, uh, you know, poor. All in all, you are basically signing up for a long-term maintenance overhead when you are basically using uh, or you know wanting to configure uh, real devices, you might be able to start slow and start uh, uh, small. Uh, but then, as as you start uh, you know scaling, you would definitely undergo a number of issues that I have just mentioned. Cloud platforms uh, do solve all of these challenges for you with a fraction of cost involved. Uh, when you are comparing it with maintaining a real device infrastructure 
in house right for a long term so from that perspective when you are basically evaluating cloud platforms uh, what should your checklist look like right uh, firstly as you could see as a part of our demo today as well as the talk that uh, you know we gave before that conformance to real world use cases is no longer a corner case in your web application as and when these uh, web apis uh, you know are growing and with the growth and maturity of them you would definitely want your real devices uh, uh, that you are using on a cloud platform to be able to test your use cases and some of the use cases have been mentioned in the example out there of course uh, you know to test at speed and scale the second most important requirement is to have your coverage taken care of right whether you are testing on android or ios windows mac smart tvs different types of devices coming up right and being able to test on these devices on demand right that's a very important requirement and definitely should be a part of your checklist the third thing which is you know a given right uh, any cloud platform that you choose should have absolute data security and compliance regulations so that you are absolutely sure that eventually when you are uh, testing on their cloud uh, devices uh, you are ensuring that uh, your data is comprehensively deleted and you are eventually testing on uh, pristine desktops and devices and of course uh, you know all the requirements around uh, you know gdpr soc2 and other compliance regulations are followed by the organization such that you are safe with them uh, along with you know you being able to test all of your use cases so these are the primary considerations uh, that uh, you should have of course your success criteria could include a lot of other things as well specific to your applications uh, but i just wanted to you know give you a quick view of what should be you know the broad areas that you should definitely look at uh so we are at the end of our talk today and we would like to open up for any questions that you have uh, so uh, to you know see uh, the q and a uh, section out uh, in the zoom chat if you have any questions please feel free to add your questions out there thank you so much samir and anvani it was a great talk uh, we have one question uh, mm -hmm. from vishnu uh, so he's saying great session otp was good any way we, uh, we can handle captcha uh, yeah vishnu that's a great question um, uh, you know uh, basically there are ways to uh, you know automate captcha as well uh, with respect to some of uh, uh, you know the applications that are coming up uh, which allow you to automate uh, and predict the ca captcha number uh, but then uh, it is basically very application specific with respect to what your application ends up using and uh, it would it would not be like a single solution that uh, uh, we would be able to talk at this point yeah okay and uh, next question we have from aditya he's saying is it possible to perform mobile testing through virtual devices when there are vpn constraints that's an important and uh, very interesting uh, you know aspect that you uh, brought up aditya uh, especially when there are vpn constraints right uh, you would you know be able to configure it uh, uh, you know with uh, with all the systems that you need to integrate with but you would need definitely need a lot of those configurations and working with uh, your uh, infrastructure team to be able to you know test uh, uh, with your virtual devices uh, when i when when i hear you say about virtual devices i'm believing you're talking about emulator simulators uh, but uh, yeah uh, uh, in case that was about real device testing i am pretty confident that on real devices uh, you are able to test your internal applications which are behind firewall or any kind of uh, proxy setup uh, and you would still be able to you know use functionalities uh, to test your in progress development applications if that was the case with real devices yes on a cloud platform uh, so hi is it possible to automate chatbot asked by vandit hey vandit uh, again uh, you know this is a functionality uh, with respect to chatbot right you would have to work with your dev teams to understand which apis are being used and uh, what are the you know specific uh, technologies that are being used to uh, automate chatbot i do not see a uh, you know a concern or a issue with respect to being able to automate it but your application use case wherein you would need to autom automate a chatbot and get a specific uh, you know 
uh, assertion done uh, would be interesting to know and we could definitely you know discuss this further in the hangout room uh, so i think uh, it it is now safe to end this session <laughs> yeah. thank yeah. you so much uh, ankit okay. uh, this was uh, nicely yeah. hosted by you thank you yeah.